Hey, hey, Miles Beckler here and just getting started on the live. I can see that I've got good mic levels according to things on my end, but if you're here with me, I would really appreciate you to take a quick minute and mention in the chat box, just let me know that you can see and hear me clearly. That would help out a ton ton for me here. And what we're going to talk about in this live chat is actually a bit about Facebook advertisement. Specifically, the question I'm really kind of trying to help answer is, can I rely on Facebook's data? And I've got a thumbs up that uh, we can hear and see. Brian, welcome. Camille, welcome. A lot of people are going to be joining and welcome to everyone. I'm going to get into kind of like this beginning, what I'll call the teaching side of this, which I'm going to keep as concise as I can. Then we'll get on to answering any questions. If you want to do a funnel review, uh, if you want your questions answered, get them in the chat box before a bunch of people show up. Pretty good idea for you early arrivals here. And again, this video is about Facebook advertising. And the question is, can I rely on Facebook's advertising data that I'm getting from the Facebook ads manager? And really, it's the answer is a kind of, right? Like Facebook's goal is to attribute as many leads and sales as it possibly can to your advertising efforts to make it look like there's a really strong return on investment. And I appreciate the ability to look at the, the data in the Facebook dashboard, but I really set up systems to double and triple check Facebook's data because I've found time and time and time again that Facebook's data is skewed. It's it's often wrong and it seems to more often than not error in the favor of looking like Facebook is driving more sales and more leads than they actually are. So I've got two specific ways that I kind of double check what Facebook's doing in order to make sure I understand really truly the effectiveness of my ad spend with Facebook advertising. So I think the best approach to this is just to monitor these different ideas separately. And what you'll do is you'll come up with a consensus and you'll find out that maybe Facebook's doing about 80% or 90% effectiveness. And then you can kind of use that rough number moving forward. So you don't have to always look into these different systems. You kind of set a baseline for, okay, it looks like Facebook actually delivers 90% of what it says it does. And then, you know, moving forward, you just kind of like take every number that you get there. If it says a hundred leads, you just do the quick math and you're like, okay, I probably got actually 90 leads from it. So the two ways that I do it, the first one is I run a completely separate funnel for leads and traffic I'm sending through Facebook ads. Now this is the exact same funnel that I'm running with my organic traffic and then I'm running with traffic from other places. I simply clone it out. So I clone out the opt-in page. I clone out the uh, thank you page, the one-time offer page, and the one-click upsell page. In my shopping cart, I actually clone out the individual individual products. So they're the same product, same price, same everything. But now I have a way to go into Google Analytics and I can look at exactly how many people reached my squeeze page. I can then look at exactly how many people reached my sales page. And then I can go inside of my shopping cart and I can see exactly how many people purchased that unique product that is only shown to people who go through that funnel. Now, this is really easy to set up if you're just tracking that front end sale. If you kind of reintroduce people back to that product through your email sequence, you may want to consider duplicating your email sequence onto either a separate list or a separate automation and running your Facebook traffic for, through there. So you can really, in case you kind of go for the sale three times throughout the course of like seven emails, that way you're reintroducing them through a unique direction so you can kind of see if your marketing's working, right? Because there's nothing worse than making decisions based on erroneous data. That's how we can think, wow, my Facebook ads are doing great. Look at all these leads I'm getting, but actually you might not be getting what you think and your KPIs could actually be out of whack, which would be kind of a, a big challenge, right? So what I do is I use a spreadsheet to pull that data in and the spreadsheet is super simple, right? It's like a few columns. It's just how many hits, how many visitors, how many conversions, that's how many people made it to the next one, how many sales, and I com I calculate my conversion rates in the spreadsheet. The second thing that I do is I actually use my own affiliate link from my shopping cart. So I set myself up as an affiliate and my Facebook ads run through my affiliate link. So when someone clicks on Facebook, it's as if they're clicking through an affiliate link, but that affiliate is simply me. And I am able to track in my shopping cart how many sales come 
come through that are attributed to this affiliate link. Now, this isn't perfect because someone might opt in on their mobile device and they might initiate and engage and not take you on that OTO with that mobile device, but then maybe email three, they're on their desktop and then they go back and purchase on email three. And in this situation, that affiliate link won't work, right? That affiliate link, that's not the attribution for that click and that sale is not gonna to go to the affiliate link since they moved devices. The way around this is if you duplicate out your autoresponder series, so your autoresponder series is a Facebook only, right? Only Facebook traffic goes through this one autoresponder series. It's the same stuff, right? Everything's the exact same. And then you use your affiliate links again every time you link that individual from your email over to your website. And I really like this method because my wife and I have many products available. We don't just sell this front end offer that we offer from our paid advertising. So this actually helps me track additional sales that Facebook never picks up when they find other pieces of content content and other products because I'm obviously sending them access to emails uh, or I mean blog posts and my value ads, right? And once they're on our website, it's really easy to find other things to purchase. And that's really the two ways. And I highly recommend that you're at least kind of like double checking what Facebook says is actually happening. Like I said, it's just so important to make sure that you're basing your decisions because these are business decisions and they need to be based on really good data. Um, there's no such thing as perfect data. There is no click tracker or special tracker that's going to magically solve all of these problems. This is what the professionals I know, this is what they do. We put multiple checkpoints in place. It's that whole like measure twice, cut once idea. And then we compare the data. So if you got all three of those different systems running, right? You got the Facebook running, you got a separate funnel running and you're using your affiliate link. You should be able to look in and you're gonna find a very high correlation between two out of the three. And then you just adjust in the future. Future. So what you're trying to do is figure out like, okay, Facebook says I got six sales. The reality is I got four sales. Then you know every time kind of you do the math on that to find out what that percentage is and you can apply that percentage in a bigger picture. I used a, a bad example there with four sales and six sales. We want bigger numbers than that, right? Statistically significant stuff is important, but that's kind of the game plan. That's really what I recommend doing. That's what I'm doing. Uh, that way I can go and look at my affiliate dashboard as the affiliate and say, okay, how much money did my ads make today? And I can do that right from my affiliate dashboard. I can also compile that data into spreadsheets and I can also kind of once I have an idea of how clean the data is, I can just go into the Facebook ads and make all of my decisions based on the Facebook ad level. And that's it really kind of super simple stuff. Just putting in a couple of checkpoints. You know, I don't um, fully trust Facebook. I love Facebook advertising. I love the platform, but I'm always double checking and making sure things are what they say they are. That's kind of the teaching portion of this. And it's Friday evening. I threw this out via social media. I threw this out through my email list to invite you here. So thank you for joining me. And now I'm going to jump over into the comments and I'm going to see if there's any questions. I'm going to get a quick drink of water as I do this. And if you've got questions, put them in the comments. If you'd like me to do a funnel review, put your funnel, your entrance point, which would be your opt-in page that inside of the comments, you won't be able to paste an actual URL because, uh, Facebook's or excuse me, YouTube's going to block any URLs. So just write out the dot, right? So your domain.com forward slash whatever your landing page is. Don't send me your homepage. If you just have a content based website or an e-store, I want to see a clear optimized page that's designed to get a user to take an action. So an opt-in page or a sales page is what we're after. And I'm gonna jump in those comments in one quick second and say, Hey, so thanks for joining. Really excited to have good internet access. I'm actually house sitting. I'm on a house sitting stint, so I've got good access. Even though I've been out in the woods, you've probably noticed that uh, a fair amount. And here we are. So we've got all kinds of people in here. Camille, Brian, Michael, thank you. King Kofi, awesome. Alex, good to see you guys. Happy everyone's here. And um, let's get to it here. So Mad Seattle, Facebook data showed I was getting over 200 website clicks and you really got 18 clicks. That's really interesting. So what you need to look at is what kind of attribution you're getting. And there's a difference in Facebook between website clicks and link clicks, right? Or actually I think it's clicks and link clicks is what Facebook has. So Facebook is trying to attribute every single click on an ad as a click, right? So if you're 
if you're looking only at the click data and not the link click data, Facebook's going to show you every time somebody clicked like, every time somebody clicked heart, every time somebody clicked and engaged with your ad counts as a click when it's actually kind of an engagement. So make sure that your ad manager is displaying the link click number and see what that is. And really, this is a perfect example. I know it's like frustrating and challenging to be like, yo, Facebook says I'm getting this many clicks, but I'm, I'm seeing this in analytics. There's always going to be a conflict. So it is normal. But I would say that big of a conflict is not normal. And I really think that might be what's going on here. And you can always just go into your ad manager and adjust the fields that you're seeing in order to kind of get it to display the right kind of click for you and then looking at the attribution window how many days is it doing an attribution for is it a one day attribution a seven day or a 28 day um i don't have any hard set rules i usually run it at 28 day attribution because i want the most data but you might want to play with those attributions to see if you get something that matches cleaner and the goal in this situation for you is to really find a way to get it displaying something really close to your analytics. So when you look in, you know you're within the ballpark, right? Because 18 to 200, that's not even in the ballpark. So take a look at that, and I hope that helps you kind of get in the right direction. Um, all kinds of people in here. So home-based bakery, having trouble getting customers from it, please help. These videos are absolutely here designed to help you. I've got um, a blog post. I'm gonna post up my blog post for you. That's the full how to advertise on Facebook. Um, one quick second here, Beth. Um, so this, I just put up a link there and that is actually going to be, it's kind of the most comprehensive post I've ever made on my blog post about how to do Facebook advertising. And it walks you through the process. Um, it is challenging, right? It takes time to get it dialed in and really it just takes working with it and commitment to, to stick with it. But geo targeting, finding people who like what you have, right? Excluding people who don't eat what you make type thing. There's ways to get it, but it, it takes a lot of time to really refine it down. I mean, it took me honestly like years to figure it out. Um, going through a couple of high end courses really helped me expedite my learning curve once I got there. But um, know that trial and error is a part of the process. And you also have the option to do content marketing. You can do videos, you can do blog posts, talk about your methodologies, your bakery, et cetera. And you can get your site to rank on Google and you can get traffic from Google. Um, free traffic, it sounds like it's free, but it takes a lot of effort to create that content. And sometimes for local businesses, for people looking for local artisan bread, it's easy to connect with them through the search engines, through Google, and that's done by content. So Facebook is interruption marketing and you really need to kind of get deep with yourself is like, is interruption marketing the right way to sell bread in my local market? Um, it's not, Facebook ads is not the be all end all for every business at all. Um, so sometimes you gotta think of like, what is that user looking for? Are they searching Google for your goods? If so, make sure you're putting a lot of effort into showing up on Google in the organic rankings. So keep the comments coming here. If you've got question for me, I'm starting to run through these. Um, is there any free Shopify funnel app? I don't know. Um, I don't use Shopify at all. So um, yeah, that's it. So Efrain Quintero, hey, what's up, man? Uh, any videos on creating your first funnel? Um, you know, if you're on ClickFunnels, you said ClickFunnel. Uh, if you're on ClickFunnels, I maybe have an older one. I don't use ClickFunnels anymore, but I do have a video. If you go search for the DIY video series, uh, I'll type that in here, not the actual address, but um, search for DIY sales funnel. If you search for that, I'm, I'm pretty much dominating that search phrase on YouTube. So even if you just search the general YouTube, but if you go to my channel, which is youtube.com forward slash miles B, click on my playlists. I have a playlist there that has the whole kind of DIY sales funnel. That's where I essentially create a ClickFunnels alternative on WordPress. It'll save you about $3,000 a year versus going with WordPress or with uh, ClickFunnels if you do it on WordPress. And I lay out step-by-step -step how to do everything. So it's pretty easy there. Um, David, so you are the offer owner. I heard you don't want to use ClickFunnels because you don't have full control. That's exactly right. Like I don't like giving up that kind of control. I'm of the philosophy that we need to own the race course, meaning we need to build on a system we have control over. There were too many times that ClickFunnels went down and I had nothing I could do. ClickFunnels didn't work the way it said because it's a little buggy still. And there's no re recourse. I can't hire someone to get in the code and fix the problem. Um, to be honest with you, I just got an update from ClickFunnels last week. I got an email saying, hey, Miles, we finally finished fixing the search 
function because the search function in the members area was broken and it was crashing my entire website. I emailed them over six months ago requesting that they fix that. It took them over six months to fix a search feature in the members area. I haven't even been paying. I've actually canceled my account about four months ago, five months ago, and they finally just now fixed that problem. So it's, that's why I don't recommend them is like, you can't control it. There's like, ah, you know, it's kind of broken, but we're bringing in so many new people. We really don't care about you. And that kind of like that business ethic does not work with me. Um, moving on, Alan, what's up, man? Down under, cool. I, I purposely did this one later in hopes to, to give a little bit of love to my Aussie and Kiwi friends and anybody in Southeast Asia. Um, you know, sometimes I just do it middle of the day and it's middle of the night for you guys. So stoked that you're here, Alan. So I'm gonna go through your question. Hey, Miles, hello from down under. Thanks for the pixel advice. It worked like a treat, right on. Question, what are my views on quizzes for lead gens and would I then consider an OTO from the end of that quiz? Brilliant. So quiz funnels are killing it right now. Let's use crushing it. No need to kill things. We can just crush it, right? So uh, quiz funnels are crushing it right now. I don't think a quiz is enough by itself, right? Like just saying, hey, take my free quiz, right? That's not actually enough. I think there still needs to be a free value proposition, but what you can do is that quiz can kind of segment them so they get a free item that is specifically tailored to what they want, right? So that would be entering them through a quiz, asking them one to three questions to get them to identify what their needs, what their problems are, and then you have three, four, five, or six different opt-in PDFs, and it gives them the one that's most relevant to to what they need. The other way to do this is to offer one specific item that's the freebie, right? Get my free secret to reveal how to solve biggest problem, right? That kind of a headline. When they click the button, that would normally bring a pop-up that would ask them for their email. You can then have it ask them one to three questions after they've clicked the button. And now you're able to tailor not just like you don't actually tailor the opt-in giveaway for them, but the OTO they see after the giveaway can specifically address that biggest problem that they say they have. A quiz funnel can be as simple as one question, right? What is your biggest problem with blank. It can also be one to three ways. The other real big benefit, so we're talking all front of the funnel stuff up to that. The other huge benefit in running a quiz funnel is you're able to segment people as they enter your email list. And when you know what their biggest problem or challenge is, you're able to literally from day one communicate to them, you meet them where they're at, right? And you can start instantly from that first day, helping them address the problem that's most important and most pertinent to them. It's working wonders for many businesses right now. Highly recommend and it takes more effort to get that up and running, right? You might wanna just, if you don't have anything running, just get a simple opt-in and then think about how to get that, um, the, the quiz in between the opt-in and the email address to get a little more information, but it's a, it's a great method that's working gangbusters for a lot of people. Um, moving along, shop op. What is the difference? Whoa, sorry, my screen's jumping a little bit here. View content and a link click. Yeah, so link clicks are like if you're talking about specifically in ad manager, um, you know, view content is really not something I even look at. That's not a metric I pull. So I'm not pulling data on that. So I don't know what it is because I really don't care. A link click means they actually clicked on the link on your ad to go somewhere. The only things I really track in my Facebook ads are um, mainly what's my cost per lead and what's my cost per customer. If those two things are okay, I don't care if my cost per click is four cents or 70 cents, right? If I'm getting my cost per lead, well, actually my cost per lead needs to be about 70 to 80 cents. But like, I would know that, right? Because my clicks are 70 cents, then my cost per lead would be a dollar forty, dollar sixty. So I monitor that cost per lead and that cost per customer because those are the two things that matter in my business, right? Clicks don't make me money. Leads make me money. Sales make me money. And I'm I'm using so I say make me money, right? That's when I'm giving value to people. That's when I'm bringing value to my marketplace, which is the ultimate goal. I'm using short phrases here to try to be uh, quick and easy with it. So when I say make me money, my goal is not to make money. My goal is to engage users, find highly engaged users and give a lot of value to them and present it in a way that makes them interested in taking me up in my offers. But those are the only two things I really look at. So I don't really know even what the view content is. Um, it might be a read more click. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Michael, you're right. I'm no longer in the woods. Uh, 10 day house sit, but in three, maybe four days, I go back out and uh, the road trip continues up to Canada. We're going to Vancouver Island, going to drive all the way over to Banff and then drive down to the Southwest all through the Rocky Mountains and going to hang out in nature. And I'm going to keep these videos going. So pretty exciting. 
Um, Michael, you're getting a 404 not found page. Um, so if you go to my website, milesbeckler.com, I think you're asking about the Facebook ads one. If you go to my website and uh, just, so milesbeckler.com loads, you'll see my big old headshot, scroll below that and you're gonna see the newest posts. The how to advertise on Facebook one is one of the newest ones right there on milesbeckler.com. So Alex, would I recommend PLR content as an opt-in freebie? Definitely not. Could I recommend a good platform for purchasing quality PLR content? No, there's no such thing. A big reason why, and I want to give you the why after such a clean, decisive no, is because you really need to establish yourself as someone who is helpful to an audience of people. And just going and getting some PLR that someone else wrote is not actually helpful. It's I know PLR articles are advertised as something that's going to save you time and we do all the work for you. That's sales messages to try to sell you PLR stuff. The only people who really make money with PLR stuff are the people selling PLR, right? Because they can sell it over and over and over. You really need to think about these individuals you're being of service to within your business. You really need to make sure you're creating great, highly relevant content that's super unique, that gives them something positive and powerful they can engage with to get an experience in their life. You should be building your business in a niche that you care about, a niche that is something you know by heart, a niche that's something you're passionate about, something you're excited to research and create content and become kind of a spokesperson for that niche, et cetera. The other way it works is if you're solving your own problem, right? Like let's say um, if I was 350 pounds and I was committed to getting down to 180 pounds, I could create a platform platform that documented my process, what I'm doing, kind of almost like an accountability blog where I just talk about what I'm doing every day, my gains, my emotions, my thoughts, what I'm eating, my diets, blah, blah, blah. You can build an audience with this kind of content. But again, it needs to be authentic. It needs to come from the heart and PLR misses that completely. So I really think it's a total waste of time and it's going to get you spinning your tires. You need to really build it for the long term, which requires you to kind of like it takes work. I mean, it, it's tough to put together a freebie, but uh, once you get it up, once you get it out, it can have an incredible shelf life. Um, my wife and I have used two separate things over the course of eight years, roughly, um, maybe three, I guess, um, if I go way, way back. But in the last five years, we, we've created two things that took maybe a half a day to create each. So yeah, it can take a lot of time to get it going, but once it's going, it can have a very, very long shelf life. Um, Cool. So John Doe, what, what platform do I use? I use WordPress. Um, if you, if you search the same thing that, that it frames on the DIY sell, uh, DIY sales funnel, I use a WordPress funnel. Uh, click funnels is not actually the easiest way to go. That's just an incorrect statement. Um, they're, they're marketed as the easiest way to go. And that's what their marketing says, but their platform is very buggy. It doesn't give you enough control. If you're just doing an opt-in page, great. But if you're actually trying to take advantage of their full funnel, there there's potential for challenges there that you really can't get in and fix. So Michael, Ambler work question. Could I make a general store website in which to satellite various other stores looking at a trademark family name hub? So you're talking about like buying like smith.com and then you make like a website where there's like john smith.com, mary smith.com. I mean, you could do something like that and you could like you would have to think about if each one's a separate website off of that main spoke, right? You'd have smith.com and then the question is do you do a subdomain or a folder? So would it be john.smith.com or would it be smith.com forward slash john and each of those could be its own separate wordpress installation that could have its own look its own feel its own copy and it would be kind of essentially the same as having a separate website all hosted at one domain um not really sure that i hope that answers your question if not feel free to ask again um michael got the link to work good to hear Hazma Davis, do I have an idea of when we'll be able to post ads to facebook groups other countries are using it but we don't have access to it in the us so I run a big group, not a big group. I have a medium sized group that's based on like a beach town in Mexico. It's uh, I started the group because I wanted to try to pull that community together. And Facebook notified me about six months ago that they were going to test running ads inside of that group. Now I'm US based. Uh, I have a US based account and this group appears like it came from a US based individual. So I don't know if we're going to get the ability to target our ads inside of groups. Like, I don't know if we're gonna be able to say like, I want my ad to show up in this group, but we might. It, what might actually happen is when individuals who are in your audience segment that you've set up for that ad set, when they go to a group, the ad will display for them in the group. We simply keep targeting the people, the interest, et cetera, but when they go to the group, but again, I'm not I'm not in the know enough about this um, to know whether that's the way it's going or how it's gonna work. I do know in Mark Zuckerberg's last 
quarterly update for investors. He spoke very highly about how much traction they're gaining in groups and how they even changed their mission statement to incorporate the idea of community because groups are such a powerful part of Facebook. So understanding that, that the ads will go there, but um, really I don't know per se. And a part of why I don't know is I don't need to search this stuff out because what I'm doing, the way I teach it on the channel, it's still working. I'm getting leads within my KPI. So I'm just continuing to do what already works. It's not until my KPIs get skewed that I start to look for other things that work. Um, I'm kind of like, you know, get it set up, let it run and ride that way as long as I can. I don't necessarily see the need to distract myself with a new possibility because that's, man, Facebook just comes out with lead ads and chatbot ads and this and that. And like, if I spent all my time testing all those, it would really limit the amount of productive time I have um, when what I'm doing is producing within my KPIs. So I'm, I'm cool with that, but I'm not like super aggressive to get absolutely every single penny I can. Like, I just don't, I don't take that approach to my business. I, I value my lifestyle and, and having free time too. So cool. I hope that answers. Um, he Joe Tupac, you felt any difference after Facebook pixel May 5th? No, don't even know what that means. Um, I've just been using it and that's it. So, um, Ron Ellington driving Lyft, listening for extra cash and listening in right on that's, that's triple hustle on a Friday. So like Ron Ellington props to you, man, like build the mindset, listen to audiobooks when you can when you get the mindset working right and you get in that right vibe and you start to celebrate these little victories that most people are out at happy hour right now, right? But this goes out to the hustlers. And like, when you just live that lifestyle, things line up, things happen, luck, we create luck through our actions, right? Like we literally create luck through our actions. And I think that's exactly what you're doing now. So awesome. A dreamer consultant pulled over on the side of the road to check out that's two for two on cars. Glad you pulled over. Uh, I'm happy to help. Any questions, feel free to answer them here. Um, Michael Pitluck followed, set up the whole DIY sales funnel. Working on finishing up your opt-in. That is awesome. You're good to go. Taking action. That is just such the, the trick to this all. It's so easy to watch all these videos and philosophize about the ideas and, oh, okay, that's how that works. And they get into conversations and go on forums and no, 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 it works this way. It works that way and get into groups. But like until you kind of block out some of the other stuff and actually build something, run some traffic to it, that's when you can iterate. And iterating is what makes all the growth, right? It's not like the first funnel I ever put out worked. It was terrible. My first ads were terrible. My first $5,000 in Facebook ad spend did not work, but I kept with it. I kept testing, tweaking, testing, tweaking. And then I figured out some stuff that works. Now I've been able to do that for years and years and years. Found my funnel that my, is still kind of the, the offer that, that is still one of my best offers. I came up with the wording of this like three years ago and I've been running traffic to it. I've generated, I, I did a bit of research in my ad account. I've generated over a hundred thousand leads, right? I've had over a hundred thousand conversions from Facebook ads with this stuff. It's absolutely impressive what happens. And it took a lot to get to where things clicked. But once they clicked, I went into maintenance mode and just fine tuning, fine tweaking, and that's it. And that's where I go back to content marketing, make sure Google, I, we're, we get most of our traffic from Google to this day. Most of our leads come from our content marketing. You obviously notice how many videos I'm putting out. Like I try to do a lot more of that than I do like geeking out only in the ads. I want multiple streams of traffic. I want multiple streams of income. I like a very stable kind of business that allows me to really trust that I'm able to do that. So Gustavo Geraldini, hey Miles, uh, is it worth it to use the traditional squeeze page or the new Facebook leads with the pop-up box? So I have tested these and it depends, right? Like that's the ultimate answer is it depends. And what I like about a traditional squeeze page squeeze page is I control what the user sees after they opt in, which means after they opt in on my squeeze page, I'm able to show them an offer, a one-time offer. It's on a separate page. It's a super special offer and they're potentially able to click the button and purchase that right then and there. What this does is it allows me to kind of recoup my investment of my ad spend very quickly. I'm talking like three minutes type quickly. So some people who I spend five cents, 10 cents on a click for, they actually turn into a 27, maybe even an 80 plus dollar sale within a few minutes, right? So I can't necessarily do that with the lead ads. They opt in, there is a link that says, click here to visit the site, which would allow them to go look at the one-time offer. You could set that up to go to the one-time offer. But I found that very few people actually took that step and went to that next level. So 
for me, it didn't make sense. So who does it make sense for? If you have a very long sales cycle, if you have something that you actually just want to deliver four or five emails and you don't have a one-time offer and you go into that email and you, you build a relationship with them from the get-go, then it can work wonders. I also found I had a higher unsubscribe rate from individuals who came through this way. People don't necessarily connect that, oh yeah, when I clicked that lead ad and went through that form on Facebook, they now have access to my email box. And people are like, what's this? Like they were, they were kind of unsubscribing more quickly. So it didn't work for me. I know people it does work really well for, and it really depends on where you're at and how you're structuring your funnel and what you're working on. So is it worth a test? Absolutely. Would I go all in on it blindly? Absolutely not. So I think that uh, kind of covers it in a fair way there. There are lots of Michaels in there. I am, I'm stoked for the number of Michaels that we have here. Uh, it seems like some other Michaels are uh, excited by that too. It's pretty fantastic. Grillo invest or Grillo invest. I'm not sure, but, um, does Facebook shut down your ad account if you get a low relevance score? If so, how many times? So they can, um, honestly, one bad ad can, can get you booted. Uh, one, like really, I highly recommend that you go read Facebook's advertising terms of services and policies. Just go to Google Facebook advertising policies. It's a very clean, very clear, concise document that says no gambling, no, you know, like you can do this, you can't do this. Um, and sometimes people are trying to say like anything that's about make money, like learn how I made $5,217. If you try to run an ad like that and a squeeze page like that on Facebook, they might ban your account straight away. You're gone. So there, I don't know of a hard, fast rule. I do know that the longer you've been successfully running ads, the more kind of mature your account is, the more of a leeway you get. I know they're quicker to ban newer accounts, but with that said, I, I've heard of old accounts being banned right away. If you're nervous, go to business.facebook.com, sign up for a business account, and claim your advertising account that you already have set up there. Then from the business.facebook.com kind of management system, you can go create three or four or new ad accounts, don't add a credit card to them. Give them a name, don't add a credit card. Because if you add the same credit card, what happens is Facebook, when they ban an account, they ban every account with that credit card number in. So you leave those accounts kind of set up without a credit card, and if for some reason you get one account banned, you then go in and add your credit card number to the next one. You can share pixel data, you can share audiences. So it's kind of a way to safeguard yourself, but um, yeah, like you should be getting a minimum of seven or eight on all of your relevance scores. You should be putting out advertising that is truly helpful to your audience, that gets hearts, that gets thumbs ups, that gets positive kind of comments. Like if your advertising is getting negative comments and spam reports, you're doing it wrong. You have to go read the books. How to Write a Good Advertisement by Victor Schwab, uh, Breakthrough Advertising by, um, Schwartz, Eugene Schwartz. Um, there's so many, John Caples, uh, Dan Kennedy. You have to go study copywriting because when you do marketing right, people are thankful. They reply with thank you messages when you send them offers and when you advertise to them. And that's what we see in our ads. And you got to get to that point. And then what happens is your ad becomes a positive piece of content on the Facebook ecosystem. Facebook likes it. So they reward you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's also the relevant score. Also, like if you're getting a low relevant score, you're paying two, three, 3x what you could be paying if you had a high relevance score. They actually reward you in the cost per engagement, cost per click, cost per thousand CPM, if you will. Um, if you have like the nine or the tens, you get a better deal than those who have the three or the four. So really like study and master this to, to where you're getting the high um, relevant scores because it's, it's so important. Um, when Facebook auto populates the interest in the ad section, yeah, you find there's many more than when you use the insights. Is it okay to use those? Totally. I actually did a video on that last week because people are having more and more difficulties with the audience insights tool. What I do, um, so you're asking if it's okay to do those interests that don't show up in the interests audience insight tool, but they do show up as the auto populate from the ad set creation process. Yes, use them. But I always go and check. If you don't know what they are, go Google their name, go look on Facebook for their fan page and do like at least a quick 30 second, five second, 10 second, like is my target market interested in this? Would my customer avatar like this? Because if you don't just do that quick thing, you might actually be choosing something that Facebook's data says is relevant, but has no 
relevance to the, the, the mindset, the psyche graphics of your kind of your demographic, and then you're just wasting money. So take that one little bit of time to go look at them and just, just like, you know, just touch it and be like, okay, is this okay, good. That's good. And then run them. But yeah, that, that is actually probably one of the best ways now. And this is a great example of, I mean, I didn't even make the, so audience insight video one was like what, five months ago, right? Like it just, Facebook just changes things so quickly and good on you for noticing that and adapting. Um, Alex, it's my happy, my happy it is my happy uh, i'm happy to clarify for you so luis um oh my goodness i'm getting the comments coming up here do i know what's going on with facebook page like section in the audience so unrelated pages what am i doing about that like literally i just talked to michael about that go to my channel there is a um let me really quickly go find what the title of that is and just one quick second here so my channel to find it you go to youtube.com forward slash miles b um that's just the the first initial and then when you click on my channel or i mean when you're on my channel excuse me um you're going to notice that if you click on uploads it'll show you the newest uploads it's like the second one down or you click on videos up top and the video you're looking for is it's my one, two, three, four, fifth oldest video. It might be sixth with this live one in here. It says Facebook Audience Insights Alternative. Um, published a week ago, got 2,100 views. So go see that video. I cover it in extreme depth on how to do that. So Mona, you're doing a conversion campaign at 20 bucks a day, three conversions a day. This is not good results. Um, it depends. Like if each conversion is worth $8 for you, that's a cash flow positive. So is it wiser to do a lead ad campaign so they can subscribe right there and get 80 visitors maybe you need to test them against each other so when you say three conversions are you saying that's three leads per day i'd be curious how many clicks you're getting because i want to know what is your conversion rate on your opt-in page because if you're getting let's say 40 clicks and only three conversions there's nothing wrong with facebook right now the problem is your squeeze page, right? That would mean you're having less than a 10% conversion rate and you have to be seeing at least a 30 to 40% conversion rate in your opt-in page. Now, is it easier to get the opt-in from the lead ad campaign? Maybe, give it a test, but be sure you're calculating what is your conversion rate on your opt-in page and don't think that it's a Facebook problem if your conversion if your conversion rate on your opt-in page stinks, right? Like own that, learn how to get better at that, learn how to run spit tests to make that better. I'm not saying that it does, I'm just saying if the data says that you've got a 9% conversion rate, the problem is the offer, right? The problem is the words you're using on your opt-in page, and that's what needs your attention, not something on the ad side. The cool part is you're learning about this quickly. You spend 20 bucks a day, and you're seeing, you run a bunch of traffic, and you're like, okay, quick, easy way to identify that the weak spot in your funnel is that. Go fix that, run a little bit more traffic, tweak it again, run more traffic, tweak it again. That's the iteration cycle. That's how you go from starting and being new to getting a funnel that works that's cash flow positive or break even and that's that's the name of the game um jesus castillo i am doing uh site reviews right now opt-in pages only like funnels i'm not going to go look at home pages there's too much going on we should never send traffic to a home page we need to send people to a page that gives them the opportunity to take an action or not so if you've got a page like that, that you want me to check out be sure to enter it in the comments um and you might not be able to put the whole URL, so write out dot dot. Um, all the Michaels are the hidden secret. We've got like a tribe of Michaels on here. I love it. Um, Gustavo, do I think asking for email addresses on all my videos is a good idea instead of making offers? You know, I think not asking for things on lots of videos is a really good idea. I think being a genuine human being that gives for the sake of giving on a regular basis is a very good idea. If you notice in my videos, I rarely plug my email list. With that said, my email list now has something like 1,300 subscribers on it. And I'm not, that's a vanity metric, like, right? Like when people are like, oh, I've got. I got 450,000 subscribers on my email list. That doesn't mean anything. I want to know what your open rate and what your click-through rate is. Because if you got a 0.2 click-through rate on a list that size, you're just wasting money on hosting email addresses of people who don't care about you. If you have 1,000 people or 2,000 people on your email list who actually open and like 80% of people open your emails and 22% click through, then you've got something that's noteworthy. And I'd rather have a small list that's highly engaged. So I really do think that you need to time your asks very, very well, 
right? Like it needs to be relevant. So what's that thing that you're giving them in exchange for the opt-in for their email address? And make sure that the video that does ask leads up to that, leaves them craving more, leaves them craving that thing that you're gonna give them. And then feel free to put out a few other videos that talk about other things and link people back to that one that's your call to action video, right? So on my channel, I've got a handful of videos that call people to my list and that promote affiliate products. I most of the time create content just to give. I'm putting out goodwill to build an audience. That's why I'm sitting here on a Friday night at 6.15, rapping as fast as I can, drinking water, getting my, my throat hoarse after doing, I've done nine podcast episode recordings from uh, as a guest this week, right? Like it's to give. I'm not doing this for me. I'm not doing this to grow my list. I'm doing this to give because I know if I put enough goodwill out there that people will find a way, right? Like people, people have been like, yo, how do I find your list? Or Miles, do you have an affiliate link for this? I'm about to sign up. And I'm like, oh my goodness, thank you for asking. I do actually. So really it's that I, I put out a couple of videos. The law of attraction video is one I would recommend watching. And it really talks about that just giving to give. Um, but like mix it up, like make offers from time to time, like ask for email from time to time, but just give to give from time to time. Um, Brian Thomason, you know that I am big on Facebook ads and funnels indeed, but as a complete beginner, how would I do an Amazon Associates site? That's a great question. Man, I've been thinking about doing a, um, I've really been thinking about doing a video on how to kind of set up review sites. I think review sites are huge right now. Like Amazon review sites, like what's the best blender.com? And then you just go review every single blender that is on Amazon, right? And it's it's a ton of content. You have to really get into content marketing, which means um, WordPress blog is gonna be your core, uh, probably Thrive theme, so you can have a conversion optimized theme, a lot of keyword research, and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of content. Now, I'm gonna give you a little tip. I've never mentioned this before. It's on Reddit. There's a subreddit on the web website Reddit. Um, it's called Just Start, and it is all people who do Amazon content marketing. That's it, they do what you're talking about. They do review sites, and they literally, like the, the, the metric they gauge how well they're doing is how many words they've written. And some of these guys have written hundreds and hundreds of thousands of words. They've created five and six figure websites with these. I think one dude sold a website for for a mill or more, um, all based on content. So you don't have to do funnels, right? And I even said earlier, like most of my leads, most of my traffic does not come from paid. It comes from Google for me personally on my stuff. That's my wife and I, it's Google organic. Um, I get about 12,000 visits a month, Google organic to my website. Um, but this YouTube traffic is huge because it's a search engine, right? People search how to run Facebook ads and they find me. They're like, damn, this dude's laying it down. They subscribe. Boom, they're in my ecosystem. Eventually they'll find my opt-in, et cetera. And I'm, I'm much more of a fan of this approach to be perfectly honest with you because it leverages my time over my future. So I can put a lot of work in now in content, put a lot of goodwill out now. And you know what's gonna happen? This video we're recording together right now is going to drive traffic and going to connect with new people for years to come. Facebook ads, the day you stop running them is the day they stop displaying. And I play that game, but I'm, I'm building a life long business here, right? I'm trying to take care of my like older self. I'm trying to take care of my 90 year old self, my 80 year old self, my 70 year old self. I'm trying to do that work now and structure it in a way that I'm going to get long-term residual benefits, which is why I'm here with you tonight. So kind of interesting. So Jesus Castillo, um, I got blackbytes.info. I'm going to go ahead and go there, but let me do a screen share. I'm going to switch this around. So give me one second here while I figure out where is, there it is. Thanks for your patience. And I'm gonna share my entire screen and you guys should be able to see my screen now. So let's go take a look at Jesus's website. So, and you're the first one in. So I'm hoping this is a squeeze page. We're gonna, I'm gonna get that kind of trained here. So I'm hoping this is just it. Boom, you did it, perfect. So first of all, like, I think this is great. I know exactly what we're talking about here. My, my like that, that two second, like boom, Ruby tutorials for serious Ruby developers. I don't like how this is on two lines. It might not show that way on your screen. Let me do control minus on my, yeah. Um, I have a small laptop, so sometimes mine tweaks things, um, but just something to keep in mind, I would try to make this one, one full width to pull this up as high as you can, right? We don't necessarily need this much space dedicated to the red area. Um, Exit pop, right? It saw me move my mouth. You said you thought that. Um, so did an exit pop. Brilliant on having that, by the way. If you're running paid Facebook ads, they don't like 
um, exit pops sometimes. So this could be a problem if you're running paid traffic, you might need to get rid of this. I would change this right here to something that's more compelling, right? Like my free gift, like, no, 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 like the best Ruby tutorials ever are waiting for you, right? Like hit me again on that Ruby thing. Cause that's what I care about. Cause you know, through the targeting, would you like to improve your Ruby skills? Like let's, let's, how do we amp this up? Right? You want to improve your Ruby skills in half the time or in less time or how to double your Ruby skills in half the time. Like let's give it a measure of how much better it's going to be and how little time it's going to take. Uh, it's difficult to come up with this stuff, but I'm trying to give you the ideas. This looks like, is this like a PDF book over here? If it is, I would go on Fiverr and I would hire somebody to make it look like a book that that 3d perspective look to where it actually looks like a book um if it's a video series i would i would try to try to show like a, a device with a video playing on it type thing um you should click on the button below so should let's get that out of there tell them what to do so click on the button below to grab your free guide now not while you're here like so let's get let's just get more direct with it right like there's a little fluff on the front and the back but let's just get really direct um the guide contains i would put this below the button right here get my guide now. So get the free guide now. Perfect. I would not have this here. So if you're sending traffic to this website, damn, that's actually a really dope. Okay. Two things here. I want to, I want to address this two ways. Number one, if you're driving organic traffic to your website. This makes really good sense. You've got like the biggest thing on your site is a call to action. If you're paying for traffic here, this doesn't make good sense because you could lose people. They, instead of taking this action, which is the ultimate action you want them to do, same wording on that pop-up box, right? Instead of taking that, they might come down here. They might watch this. They might click here. They're going to go somewhere else. And then all of a sudden they're like, okay, cool. I'm done. I'm gonna go back to Facebook now. Um, Man, so you got conversion optimization stuff all over here. I really like it. Um, I think it makes perfect sense. And I like the no sidebar here. I'm not really doing that kind. Of, I really like the no sidebar look. I'm doing that on my site too right now. Um, so yeah, I would, I would say, I think that's it. I think you're doing great, dude. I think this is fantastic. I, I don't know if you need like this big old red bar is one thing that I'm kind of like, eh. Not, not sure about because sometimes the eye gets stuck, right? This, this contrast from red to white, I probably would just white this out, right? Or keep it a little bit. Yeah, I would just white this out with a black headline up top, really scrunch this up. I want this button fully visible as the page loads above the fold, right? Right now it's like, I can't fully see that. You're making me scroll that much. But if the page loaded like this, right? With that, the headline kind of in this space up here, Perfect. Like I, I think this is very, as long as you don't have this, this is very worthy of paid traffic or if you're running organic traffic, I think you've got a sweet setup. Uh, I'm going to keep the screen shared for a minute. We'll just look over here um, at these other ones. So you'll see this way just after talking about iteration. Love that quote from, oh, the quote from LinkedIn's uh, CEO. If you're not embarrassed by your first product, you, you went to market too late. It's so true. Look at my first video. If you need reaffirmation of that, we just got to start and then change. Um, Pages no longer work in audience insight. What happened? That's Facebook. That's just Facebook doing what they do. Um, it's it's amazing at, at how much they're changing the game. They're the fastest to iterate on their end, which means for us, it's always changing. But luckily, there's a different way around it. And it's this video, since I've got your screen, this Facebook audience insights alternative. Um, if you watch it, give it a thumbs up and a comment. I do appreciate that. Helps me get the words out. Um, hey, Miles, David Kim, what's up? Uh, cool. Got a little conversation going in here. Um, Grillo, not Grillo. Cool. All right. So I was taking the, the Spanish. Um, what does bad mean? Mm, I don't even remember how I said bad or what the context was of that. So um, I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. Mike Lazarus. Ah, it just jumped. You guys get to see why or how that jumps. How crazy is that? Jimmy Chua, I just saw you. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Where was I? Uh, trying to keep it in order. Um, one moment. Thanks for your patience here. 80 clicks. Okay, cool. So 80 clicks. So um, this this is a back to that one. So you got 80 clicks and three leads. So the challenge is your, your squeeze page isn't actually converting, right? So if you're getting 80 clicks for 20 bucks, that's less than 50 cents a click. That's... Uh, 25 cents a click, right? So that's a that's a fair click cost. If you're converting 50% of those clicks, you should be getting 50 cent leads, which means you should be getting 40 leads per day. And that should be your goal, right? You want to get that, you got to get that lead number up by optimizing your site, not from, um, there's nothing really to tweak on the ad side at this point. So uh, Mike Lazarus, yes, another Michael. I love it. Go team Michael. In the YouTube videos, my thoughts flow together really well, except that time I started talking about my favorite socks. That's awesome. So how do I prepare for the videos? Let's actually go back here. Here. Um, so how do I prepare for videos? I don't 
like honestly i i guess i'm born with some sort of unique talent like i talk a lot in real life i just flow with it and it's something you got to remember at this point i've done 225 videos i did spend a little bit of time uh in college i worked for my college radio station i had a college radio show um i even tried calling some sporting games i called some football games for my community college in california that's really tough stuff like i don't get that sport enough but um so I do some preparation and my preparation is I come up with a topic. Uh, once I come up with like an idea, I'll generally go to the keyword tool that I covered in my keyword research and I look at what is the phrase or what are the words that people are searching for um, that explain or describe that topic that I wanna talk about. And then I start and it's it's an interesting process. I often don't know much about what I'm gonna say when I start. I do kind of a very standardized intro. And the reason I do that, like you can listen to my videos, like they all sound the same in the beginning. And the reason I do that is kind of force of habit to, to habituate the process of just like getting the words going and I just kind of roll with it. Like I'm freestyling in some sense, right? That, that literally is the way I look at the way I approach this. Sometimes I take notes on three notes but like this video, as I started, I had two main ideas. This is what I do, right? I've been doing internet marketing. I made my first websites in the late 90s. I made my first money online in 2003. I've been full-time online since 2010. Um, like I know this stuff inside out, up, down, back, forth. I go to events. I talk to people. I'm always like, I do not turn off. So this is really just kind of an extension of that for me. Um, and I think that's part of when I when I really hound that idea of um, do what you love, do what you're passionate about. I really am passionate about this. I'm not passionate about making money. I'm passionate about sharing this internet marketing with you to help you guys make money. And that's like my shift. And that's why I can just like turn on and light up and let it go. Uh, but really, like if you look at my older videos, man, I'm, I'm much more, uh, um, uh, my face is like all up in the camera. Like it wasn't dialed. It didn't start this way, right? Like doing 120 videos in 120 days got me through that learning curve quick. And now I'm having so much fun with it. I'm so detached from the outcome that I feel like I just approach it with zero stress and like no fear. And I'm like, I'm just open to just seeing what comes out and putting it out and interesting kind of things are happening until I talk about socks and then it all goes to hell. Right? So cool. All right. I'm gonna flip back over and I hope that helped. I, I, I wish I had more of a, a technical or uh, technique. So John Doe, once you get banned, can you get back on? Like you can ask them, right? You can get in touch with Facebook's ad company and the manager who banned you. Sometimes you can get it turned back on, be like, yo, I'm sorry, I'll play nice. Sometimes you can't. So if you're in a gray area at all, A, study their, their policies and procedures and B, be sure that you're going in and kind of like setting up the business.facebook account and getting as many new ad accounts as you can. So you have some to, to fall back on if, if you need. Um, Super cool. Just going through the comments here. Hi, friends. So, Hijodi Tupac, uh, when you have many keywords in an ad set, is there a way to know what are converting? So this is why I break out the different um, interests in different ad sets. Go check out my video. If you just search YouTube for $5 Facebook ads, you're gonna see a video that explains how I separate all these interests. That way I can see which ones are working for me. It's all kind of there. Um, Cool, you knew what all those ad sets were, Michael. So the ones that were auto mentioned, you knew what they are. So yeah, you're all good, run with them. Um, Seb V, what's my take on driving traffic to an Amazon listing? Yeah, so you currently sell on Amazon and people have been using ClickFunnels to capture leads and translating those into sales. So I went to the ClickFunnels conference last year and there were some advanced strategies being shared. Uh, I think it works. Personally, if I was doing the FBA thing, I would be running as many Amazon ads as I possibly could because people who are already on Amazon, they, they're ready to buy. That's what we do when we go to amazon.com. We go to amazon.com and the credit card is right here and I'm ready for something to show up prime two days to my house. So if your ads show up, like the likelihood of me just clicking and adding because I'm in that buying sense of being goes up massively, right? If I'm on Facebook looking around and you want to try to get me onto Amazon or into a funnel and then onto Amazon to buy something like, Obviously, if the offer's right and it makes sense and it matches something I desire and want in my life, that can make sense. But with that said, there's much more friction. They gotta leave Facebook and go to your funnel. They gotta take action in the funnel. Then they gotta get over to Amazon. There's so much friction there. I would make sure I'm maximizing Amazon's pay-per-click system first before I ever go out to those next levels. Um, 
So could I do a small video on that? That that was it. And yeah, yeah, maybe I'll even look at um, doing that because I think uh, in one sense that like Facebook advertising is being touted as the greatest be all end all. Gary Vaynerchuk's out there being like the Facebook commercial is the hot spot right now. Um, I mean, obviously I'm kind of blowing up the spot. There's a lot of people selling how to run Facebook ads and they make it sound amazing. And some of the numbers of the return on investment are impressive for sure, right? Like what, I mean, I've generated over a hundred thousand leads like that. That's damn impressive but it doesn't work for every business. And what I'm noticing is a lot of people are trying to hit this square peg in the round hole and they're trying to force Facebook ads for their business when sometimes, you know, Google, right? Google organic is actually a better option for a lot, a lot of businesses or running Amazon pay-per-click. So um, bodies after babies, welcome to the party and good on you for uh, continuing your, your 90 day challenge that you're on. I hope you're finding your groove in that. Um, John M, can I show my sol my camping rig, my Jeep rig? Um, do I use solar at campground? So I just actually today, John, received a Renogy 100 watt solar panel with a solar controller, a charge controller. Um, I've got a dual battery set up in the Jeep. So I've got like an accessory battery that runs my fridge. Um, we've got a full refrigerator freezer in the back of that thing. And I, I'm now gonna have the solar. So I am gonna be able to spend more time off road and off the grid. Um, I just got a two and a half inch lift kit put on it today. Uh, 35 inch tires literally I think just showed up. Uh, so I'm, I'm lifting it. I got a little bit of work to do. So yes, I will do a full video walk around of the Jeep rig uh, from a really cool spot. Hopefully get that done within the next week or two. I'm going up to Canada with it. We're going to camp all from um, Vancouver Island all the way over to Kelowna, Whistler, up into Banff, and then down for the eclipse that's happening August 21st. We're going to be in Wyoming for the eclipse. Um, absolutely going to do some Jeep videos. Uh, the Jeep has its own Instagram account. If you're on Instagram, it's at Ruby Camps. R-U-B-I-C-A-M-P-S, like Rubicon Camper, Rubicon Camps, Ruby Camps. Um, so that's it. So uh, cool. Let's uh, keep going here. I'm going to keep scrolling down, see what happens. Swag B Beats. I love it. So what do you think about using black hat techniques to get traffic with bots, et cetera? I kind of like it. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I have always been incredibly aggressive and I think one of the ways I like it, but okay, hold on first. I have to give you a grain of salt. It can destroy things, right? Like it's literally like you're kind of playing with dynamite in some senses and you can blow things up. People don't know what black hat techniques are. Uh, so white hat is like the, the prim and proper right way to do it following every single rules. Black hat is kind of the aggressive, let's use bots. Let's, let's, it's, it's borderline spamming without like, breaking the can spam act of whatever it is. And then gray hat is somewhere in between. Um, you know, like I think that, that some of these ideas that some of these people have are really powerful. I used to be on black hat world a fair amount. I used to monitor it. I've run Twitter bots. I've run Pinterest bot. I've run a fair amount of bots. I'm noticing now bots aren't seeming to do as well as they were. I haven't played with chatbot technology at all. I bet there are some insanely powerful chat bots out there. Um, now, with all of that said, like there's like this old school kind of like hacker ethic in me, like punk rock, like like fight the man, like let's revolutionize this thing that I get excited by that. What happens with that is something might work and it's going to stop. Something might work and it's going to stop. Something might work and it's going to stop. And it will never stop being like that. You need to find a way to give value to a marketplace. If you can enhance the value you're giving to a marketplace and get it out a little bit more effectively, then that's great. Like there, there, there used to be this thing called a traffic geyser, which was this video marketing system that I used back in the day. And it would send your videos out to hundreds of video sites and it would interlink them all with descriptions. And it created this huge boost and people made so much money gobbling up traffic that way, but then it all came crashing down. Um, like the Google stuff, right? So we started doing organic search engine marketing in 2008, 2009, which was well before the big hummingbird panda and penguin updates. I know a lot of people that were gaming the system with magic spinner and spun contents and bots and publishing to all like easy articles and just literally kind of like spinning and publishing the same article hundreds or thousands of times, which is technically search engine spam. Um, their businesses collapsed. I know one guy, I think he was making $30,000 a month gone overnight, one update from Google. So that's, that's the, the problem, right? Like it's, it's, there's a risk, there's a reward. If you've got like a platform that you don't care about, like you might consider, it, but it's like, 
it's never, I don't know if it will ever grow beyond a short term hustle. There's always going to be something else. So at this point, I'm much more white hat in what I do. I've always been white hat with my white main website. I will never run weird stuff to my, my own website. I never did link pyramids, link wheels, any of that old school kind of search engine spam stuff because like, I just saw that like, Google cares about the search engine results so much that they're going to, they're going to destroy people who get in the way of that. Facebook cares about their user experience so much that if you got a bot in there, like eventually they're going to figure it out. Like people used to scrape IDs of people in groups and, and make custom audiences and run ads to those custom audiences. Facebook literally nipped that stuff in the booty real quick. Um, so you're, it's always this uphill battle. It's kind of like fighting upstream. Um, but there's something that's kind of funny about it, I think is, is kind of cool. So, uh, black bites one more time dot forward slash free gifts. Um, I'm going to see if, uh, let me cool. So we got a squeeze page. So I'm going to jump back over here and we're going to look at the dedicated squeeze page. So let me switch back to the screen share one quick moment and we're sharing. Oh, yep. I am sharing. Cool. And then info forward slash free gift. This was a homepage, cool. This is uh, much better. So again, I want this button up all the way. It's part way here, right? So like, let's. how do we squeeze this up? How do we get this tighter? Uh, you can move this white space, but really I think getting this down to one line, a subhead would be would potentially help out a lot. Um, get my free guide, where should I send your guide? Cool. So one thing I wanna mention here is you've got a lot of red, right? And like Ruby on Rails, I get it, it's Ruby, Ruby color, right? But what happens is this and this both look like a button. When this loaded, I was like, oh cool, your button's right there. This ain't a button, it looks like a button. Don't confuse people. I would make sure this is on a white background. And honestly, I don't even know if I would need this. And like, I would not necessarily have this. I get what you're doing, trying to segment, but you're going to crush your conversion. I would find a way to get their email address first and after you get their email address, ask them a question or two and get it to add that if you can some way kind of dynamically. Cause I, I get that the value of this, but having this here is going to crush your conversions. And I just, I would just build a list. I, I you got to, if you're paying traffic, you got to get it going. So make sure this red, like these two are confusing me, right? Which is actually the action color. This looks like a clickable button, but it's not. Um, I don't think this is adding any value here. And I think the same thing, the 3D, if that's actually like a PDF, if that's what you're giving away as a book, I would make that 3D, but get it to where like literally, um, I would run a click pop. So just like how I clicked on the other one and I got the pop-up, I would make this a click pop and I would get this button up as high as I can. So when it loads, it's got the click pop there. Um, my screen just went a little dim because I need to power on and good. So I think that makes sense. I hope that was helpful. Uh, great work taking action, uh, run traffic, see what, what happens there. Um, and good on you for taking action. So if I try Facebook ads with Facebook, Chatbots, no, so I haven't. I got friends who have, and they're doing better for some of my friends. Uh, my audience is women who are in their 50s and 60s, and I'm not really interested in getting to chatbots with them. Like, I have a couple of apps out there, and like, customer support is a big challenge, not challenge for us, but we, we have a lot of customer support tickets from what you and I probably, um, you know, I'm just guessing so, so, so tricker, like, what we consider easy seems to be a little bit challenging. Like how do I listen to this MP3 on my iPhone is a big question um, that my customer support deals with a lot. So for me, I feel like that would add more headache than it would be worth. And like I said earlier, all my stuff's working, but man, if you have anything like the way I think, that a messenger chatbot would work brilliantly is if you're selling high ticket, if you're selling coaching, and then if you're retargeting people who bought a tripwire offer and or you, you, you have a long sales cycle for a high ticket product and just in the middle of that sales cycle, they take an action and then you just let them know like, hey, just let you know, I'm here to answer any questions you have about this thing and that thing could be them going back to a sales page, right? And that could be automated through a special audience that triggers when someone goes to a certain page and then it picks up. So, so you kind of know when they go to a sales page Page, but they don't buy, then the chat bot pops up. And that's some really powerful stuff. Um, it just doesn't need to um, work. So Jesus, uh, if your homepage gets a lot of traffic, I think that's great for you on that there. Um, Grillo, you're welcome. Uh, I think it's Grillo. So Sean Matthews, what city am I? I'm in Bend, Oregon for three more days. And then I leave back on the road. How many conversions does it take for the pixel to optimize? So according to the Facebook engineer who created it, they need 25 conversions per week. So if you're not able to run 25 sales per week and estimate that one sale is going to cost at least how much you make. 
So if you make a hundred bucks per sale, you need to be ready to spend $2,500 in ads at least in order to hit that 25 conversion mark. And that's if you're, if your stuff's firing and working properly. So if you can't do that and you're not ready for that, use the lead pixel as the lead conversion as your focus, because you should be able to do 25 to 30 leads per week. That's an average of what, like four a day, I think five a day. Um, and we all should be able to do five a day on the leads. And that's enough data to get them to see that audience to get Facebook's machine learning working for you. Um, with that said, if you can get a hundred, that's even better, right? The more data you can feed them, the better they are. Facebook just crossed the 2 billion monthly active users. I think it's like 1.3 or 1.2 daily active users. So a lot of people, there's a big pool to pull from when we get that working right. Um, so Jacob Charbonneau, uh, for your squeeze page, after collecting data, 20 conversions, you're creating a WC for a VC. Oh, huh, I don't know what that is. Um, but do I create another ad set or another campaign? And also do I cancel the other ads? So let me reread this. For my squeeze page, after having collected data for 20 conversions, you're creating WC for a VC, but do you create another ad set or campaign and do you cancel it? So first of all, if something's working for you and you're getting ads and leads within your KPIs, don't turn it off. Never turn off something that's working. And in fact, don't touch it if it's break even. Just let it ride until it's no longer working for you. Um, so I, I'm curious if you're thinking that like, get some some conversions first to season the pixel and then run like a conversion based campaign that's a myth that actually is not how it works um you just run the conversion campaign from the get-go what you do in one ad set does not translate to another ad set what you do in one campaign the data you generate does not translate to the other ones it's based on the ad set so get one ad set running run it for as long as you can cash flow positive and that's how you get the most out of the machine learning if i didn't answer that correctly um catch me on that uh Sean Matthews, Facebook friend request. Cool. I am absolutely overwhelmed and inundated on Facebook. I'll look for it. I'll give it a shot. I have like 3000 requests. I don't know anybody. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a mess. And my mess, I get hundreds of messages a week. Uh, so if I'm not responsive on Facebook, I apologize because I just don't even know what to do there. I don't really like Facebook. Even though I run ads on there, like if I didn't have to run ads, I probably wouldn't be on there. But, um, Brian Thomason, Thank you so much. I've started one, but you worried about the time length before cashing in. Um, I don't know, one what? One channel? Like, just keep going. Keep giving it yourself, man. Like, everything you do, every time you give a good video, a good blog post, it's an asset that can pay you for life. Some of our older blog posts from 2009, 2010 still drive traffic to this day. Some of them drive thousands of visitors to this day from literally a blog post we wrote like seven, eight, nine years ago. So there is potentially um, the ability to get long-term results from what you're doing. So I, I think it's it's worthwhile. Jimmy Chua, wonderful to have you here, my friend. I'm gonna attract lots of people in the future. Uh, time travel back to this video, awesome. I'm so excited that you made it on this one, Jimmy. I hope things are great in Singapore. Kind of laying some framework to get myself out to Singapore again maybe November and maybe maybe we'll cruise. I don't know. Maybe we could put that together. I think that would be fantastic if it works. Final outlaw. Do I have a video that explains how to set up a Facebook video accounts that runs for multiple clients? I don't. I'm not doing client work anymore. I kind of dabbled in starting a Facebook agency, but just it just distracts me from my own business and I'd rather build my asset than others. With that said, it's a great system. All I, I might make one because I do, I do run everything I do through the, the Facebook business. Um, but literally you go set up the business Facebook account, you go claim the ad account from the person, whoever owns that ad account has to authorize it. And what the business Facebook does for anybody watching, it allows like person a to manage the ads from person B's ad account and person B pays the bill for the ad accounts. So person A doesn't have to log into person B's account, right? That makes sense. So that's why it works. And if you're an advertiser yourself, you can also set up the business Facebook account and you can set up four to six different ad accounts and just let them sit there just in case. Um, Cool. Wave as we go through Seattle. Absolutely. Uh, mother-in-law is in that general area. So we're going to stop by, hang out with um, mother-in-law for a night or two. And then we're taking a ferry from Port Angeles to Victoria in Canada. So the Jeep is going to do its first uh, over water country crossing and hopefully not its last, but um, it's fun stuff. So Jesus, it's a six page PDF. Great. So, so get that turned into a book looking thing. Um, Jacob Carboneau, epsmaster.us. I think we're still watching my screen, right? Yes, it looks like we are. So let us go look at his epsmaster.us. 
team six figures. So this is just massive amount of wasted space, right? Like a bench. Like this means nothing. Uh, team six figures doesn't mean anything. Like nothing matches at this point. So already I feel like I'm kind of like, okay, what's actually going on here, right? Like doubt and skepticism are the first things I'm noticing. So you've got navigation here that's acting as if it's, it's um, yeah, so like this, right? I'm, I'm like, oh, it looks like navigation. Let me click and it just does that. So like, I'm out already. Like I'm going to leave this website if I, if I pay to click. So, so this, this needs to be all the way up top, right? Like you want it to load none of this, none of this fancy moving stuff. We want all that stuff to load right at top and then from home and then it's test. I don't think you need the, the multiple color thing, right? Like we don't need to, to, to decorate our, our content to, to make it look right. If anything, just use bold and regular, like two font weights. So just like a leg, regular font and a bold font. Um, but I, I wouldn't necessarily use use red and black. Frank Kern has done it successfully on some things. But uh, and this gray button's pretty weak. Like get a color in here, get something bright, something that stands out, something that's like bam. Go look at Amazon.com. What color is Amazon's button? How many people do you think a day click Amazon's button? Try their color, right? Like do something colorful to, to really pull that. Um, I personally would would get off of Weebly. Um, I, I see no value in Weebly at all. I would get onto a WordPress based system. I've got that DIY sales funnel video, video number one in the DIY sales funnel video series will show you exactly how to build this out, but it'll give you so much more. You get the click pop so it doesn't show the email, right? So you're not spilling the beans. It's like click the button below for the free video and then they click and then it's like, boom, you know, let me get your, and then like a box pops up and it's like, okay, enter your email address and get it now. It's a micro commitment from Cialdini's influence concept, uh, really powerful stuff. Stuff, but you're taking action, right? So like, it, I hope, I hope it doesn't seem like I was, I was tough on it. I, I try to speak quickly and effectively based on, um, really uh, like my goal is to get through as much as I can while my voice holds. And before I hit whatever this, uh, two hour limit is, cause I can't go over two hours. I don't even know when I started, uh, anyways, but like, so, so good on you for taking action. And if I forget to say to someone else, good on you for taking action. We all start with, with like rough version ones that, that need help. And I'm, I'm not necessarily going to go in and point out all the great things. I'm just going to point out the problems so I can try to quickly get through these to the next, to the next. So take a moment to pat yourself on the back. If I wasn't clear on that, I don't want to just be totally abrasive, but I want to put some perspective into why I'm trying to go quickly through this. Um, cool. I am going through. So we got reviews. Awesome. Um, hey, hey, thank you, Adam. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's I'm happy to help. Adam Mime, don't I think having the call to action ULA newsletter sign up will come off spamming to some visitors? Maybe, test it, right? Like, I don't know what the call to action UI means, like newsletter sign up. I don't know what you actually mean by call to action UI, um, but like if that's a click pop, maybe, like test it, right? Like test a, a normal form versus another type of form. That's a worthy test. Just test one thing at a time. Um, Alan Myberg, uh, let's go in here, screen it. We got another one um for viewing so let me do a screen share and we're going to jump over to here and we have dot alanlaberno.com the quiz is not set up look at the page cool let's do this real quick i gotta put a dot in here doo, doo, doo. happy friday to everybody unless you're in new zealand or australia or asia happy saturday to you boom cool so I like it. So you're you're really kind of front and center here, right? Like this is you, you got a lot of headspace. The button, I think this is a button down here. I would love for this button to load. Now there's there's a, a concept in marketing that you have three options of who gets your spotlight. Option number one is you the creator. Option number two is the product or the thing that we're talking about. Option number three is the customer. And the more we can shine our spotlight on the customer, the better. So this is a you spotlight. And if you have like, if you've been on TV, if you've got a Food Network show, if you've if you've got that name recognition in public, this approach can work really well for you. If you haven't built that yet, sometimes it's better to lead with the hook. What is in it for me? Every human being is tuned in to W-I-I-F-M. That's an old Zig Ziglar quote, right? What's in it for me? W-I-I-F-M. And it's easy to remember and it's true. So when, when people land here, they're like, okay, what's in it for me? This is really thin. My attention, and another thing is, eyeballs draw attention. I can't not look at you, dude, like on this picture, like it is a great picture, right? And I get what you're doing. It's great personal branding here. It looks clean as can be. The challenge is you want me to read this and this and click this. But what I'm doing is I'm looking at this 
thinking about cyber stalking you on Facebook, which will get me to leave your website, which is not the goal you want, right? So that's, I'm trying to help you understand like what the goal is to get this going. And I would probably get this all spread out width wise. I would move these down lower and get that start the quiz. I would make this like a green button. Um, maybe not green, What's whatever the contrasting color is to this orange uh, or the complementary color. I don't know, one of those. It's either contrast or complementary. Play with it to where it doesn't look horrible, but something that, that really makes this pop off the page is what I'm talking about here. Um, I, think, I think this is really good. With that said, I would use a, a heavier font weight. It's, it's really thin, and so there's, there's some noise in the background, the backsplash, the, the fruit on the bowl, all this stuff, right? Like, it makes sense, but like a, a bolder font weight is going to help. Um, but really, like, do you know how to achieve effortless weight law? There's a few symbols. Like this is good copy. So like let this stand and make sure this start the quiz shows up front and center. Um, and like take my free quiz and get your own custom report, like maybe add a benefit at the end, right? Like why? So custom report, like why do I want a custom report? What's that custom report going to do for me? The free custom report that will boom, 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 boom. Get it back to benefits so you can. That will. Those kinds of phrases help you transition from features into benefits. Great work, right? Like this theme, it looks super duper clean. I just lost your sidebar. I don't know why I lost your sidebar. That's really weird. So um, page up, page down. Um, don't know why that happened, but just kind of note to self. All right, let's get back into it here. We are cruising through. Um, tutorial, that was cool. Yeah, on the radio, cool. Like it was goofy back in college. Our college radio, uh, we talked about it like it was a 10 watt station, which means that right when people left the parking lot of my community college in Northern California, they couldn't really hear us. It got fuzzy by that road that was outside of our, our station, but it was a great experience, met really cool people. Um, no DMs, man. I really I, I really block myself off from that. I don't do one-on-one -on -one consulting. I, I set aside time like this now in order to be able to communicate and like give as much as I can, but like I ignore all, pretty much every DM I get. It's I, I just I can't answer them all. I get literally thousands. Um, is that you saw if you run a political Facebook page, what's the best way to increase page likes? So I'm testing something. I haven't done a video on it yet. Uh, we're, we're creating these big giveaway packs and we're giving away, um, really kind of like valuable stuff for people. Um, so I just did a, like a 200 plus dollar, it's like a $222 retail giveaway pack. Uh, we didn't get a huge bump in our page likes as I expected, but I did get about a thousand subscribers for under $200, which breaks down to about 15 cents a subscriber, which is about a quarter, even less, like a fifth the cost, like 20% the cost. So it was a good cost per lead thing. I'm going to do a video on it obviously soon. I think Melanie, I might record that this weekend. Um, so how do you increase page likes? Like you run ads for it, but like, why do you want to increase page likes? That's a vanity metric. Are you making money based on page likes or do you try to build a list with that? So get, get really focused on what's that action you actually want people to take. Um, if you want to just bump page likes for a bit so your, your page looks real so you can run ads more confidently, run a, a page like campaign for a bit. Get 100 or 200 likes, but nobody sees how many likes you have when they see your advertisement. They see your hook, they see your messaging, they see your headline, they see your image. Let those work for you. You can run ads from very, very simple, small fan pages very effectively. Um, <clears throat> cool. Do I think it would be better to get in the weight loss niche or addiction niche? Now, this is a great question, Ryan. So, Ryan, have you ever dealt with weight loss? Have you ever dealt with addiction? Right? What do you have? What is what there is there about your your personal story, your family story, your upbringing? How do you leverage your life story in a way to be of service to people who are either dealing with weight loss challenges or addiction challenges? Because when you find that where you can be authentic and you can come from the heart and you can really help people, that is truly the powerful way to make this work. So I would say go inside of yourself and figure out how can you best help people. Can you, do you have training? Are you a personal trainer? Like can you help people lose weight? Do that, right? Or have you helped people kick addictions? Have you kicked addictions? Have you decided to stop drinking? Have you gone through the Naked Mind book and, and literally given up on alcohol or stopped smoking weed at some point or made a, a positive choice in your life like that in some way? And you can then share how it worked for you and be of support to others. Do that. But it, it needs to come from within. It's not a, it's, this is not a data-driven decision, in my opinion. This is a, a human being decision because take it take it seriously, man. If you're really, truly going to step up to help people lose weight or, or solve their addictions, this ain't about you making money at all. 
This is about you helping people like cure addictions. These people have problems, dog. Like you got to help that. You got to honor that. So, so really take a moment to get clear of like, are you ready to take that on? Are you in a position to take that on? Can you actually help people? And if not, what is that thing that you're into, right? Like, I don't know, you make vegan dog food for your dog every night. Like maybe that's your bit. Like let the, let the niche come from within some, from something you love and that you're passionate about. And everything seems to work really, really well from there. Um, Bodies after babies. Do I do faith going to my YouTube channel? No, I do no paid ads to this uh, YouTube channel at all. Keyword research, long descriptions, using those keywords at, in the. I speak out the keywords before I start. I put the keywords in the title. I put the keywords in the description. I repeat them in the description in in good English. I put them in the tags. It's a lot of keyword research, um, and just I'm creating content that most people are trying to sell, right? So I've I've found like a lot of my Facebook ad stuff that that that's pretty much two or three of my Facebook ad videos are why my channel has as many subscribers and views. Out of 225 videos, three account for like 50% of my traffic. Um, and it's it's because most people are trying to sell this information and I'm just giving it all away. So I really stand out and I've got a lot of engagement and that just kind of has created this snowball. And that's part of the power of doing a 90 or 120 day challenge is you're gonna try enough things, something's gonna work look at the data, look at what kind of like gets that little extra bump out of day one or day two, that YouTube's algorithm starts to drive more traffic to you over the first couple of days, figure out what those things are for you, and then do more of those, right? Like I didn't make my first Facebook advertising video until about two, maybe three months in, I hesitated. And then once I saw the results, I was like, oh goodness, I have to, I have to keep these going because they're working so darn well. Um, so that's part of why I've kept going on this. And that's cool. The cool part is it's pushed me to continue to up my game. I flew out to a $4,000 three day um, event in Wisconsin uh, to like, totally geek out on Facebook ads to make sure like I went through this dude's course that was 15, I paid 2000. It's now 1500 bucks. Then I went to a three day kind of in-person thing to sit down and ask all my questions. Like, why did I do that? Like, is it helping my ads a little bit? It's helping me explain this stuff. It's helping me help you guys. And that's literally the level of commitment I've got to it and finding like, I'm not saying go do that. Like, you don't have to do that. I'm just, I'm just trying to give you an example and a story from my life on how it's like, when I saw that was working, it's like, cool, I gotta, I gotta really, I gotta be on top of my game and I gotta drop more knowledge bombs than that. So I gotta up my game and that's what I did. Um, for you, it might be reading a few more books in a certain discipline of what you're doing that you didn't, that you touched on and like got really good engagement. And you're like, wow, I don't really know all that much about that, but like people loved it. Go read two or three books, do book report, right? Like follow that trend if you can. Um, it's like that whole go from the, go with the flow type thing. Um, glad to hear you find a little bit of groove. Honestly, like you're on the, so bodies after baby said, finally starting to fail find a bit of groove and, and really a big part of the 90 day and the 120 day challenge is to get you and get your brain to rewire itself to where you're a content creator, to where you've habituated that process, to where if you're going to bed at night and you haven't put out a piece of content, you feel weird because then you've shifted. And when you become a creator, which we are all creators made in the image of creators, right? Like when you step into that and you commit to that, if it takes a year or three years, I don't even know what it takes. It doesn't matter. Those numbers are irrelevant because you're doing that thing. You're creating, you're being of service. And when it starts to work, the money doesn't even matter. What matters is how much help that you're bringing. And I know if, if money's a challenge for you right now, that that's like, well, yeah, easy for you to say. Like, same thing where, where we were, the, the whole path my wife and I took to this point, um, man, habituating the process of, that is actually my goal. My goal is not to get you like, traffic, that's going to happen. My goal is not to build you an audience. That's going to happen. It already is happening. My goal is to help you become a content creator because that's the biggest skill for anyone to create significant long-term business online is, is becoming a creator. So it's like that whole, like you flex a muscle enough, uh, enough you, you get a gun there, right? So I'm going to help you get that gun. And then all of a sudden you go two days without losing weight. You're like, I need to, I need it. Like it just, it doesn't feel right. Boom. you then cross it. So there's my sneaky little secret. If you're wondering what's actually going on, but I think you kind of knew that. Um, Cool. So next one, another Michael. Surprise, surprise. Um, is there anything in general I could say about what companies, products, services perform well with Facebook ads versus those that would not? Um, it, it could it boil down to the creative? Absolutely boils down to the creative in a major way. Um, I think there's a, a way to run ads for almost anything. Like obviously anything that's prohibited by Facebook, don't do that. Like you get your ad account banned. Like high ticket stuff works better because you have more margins to play with, right? Like if I was selling a $990 course, I could spend $989.99 before making one sale and then I would be cash flow positive. It's a lot of leads. It's a lot of like 
there's a lot there, right? So high ticket products, digital products, things that have high margins help out a ton. Um, personal development, coaching, like, like it really can work for a lot of things where I don't think it works that well is like some physical businesses, some storefronts, like a plumber, anybody who, who where like when their average customer is like, Ooh, I need that. They go to their phone, they go to Google, they type in plumber comma bend Oregon. The result comes up, right? That person needs to show up on that Google result. They don't really need to be showing up on Facebook. Um, I hope that kind of helps zero a little bit. So, um, you're gonna be in Kelowna next week. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, he used to live there. Cool. So I got a mate who he worked at the ski resort. There's like a ski hill near there and, and I'm hoping he'll point us the right direction. It just seems like a really nifty lake and place. So I'm just going to go kind of like roam around and camp. And, um, do I know anything about Facebook group coaching? Um, so I don't know if you're asking about like from a standpoint of doing coaching sessions for people on how to do Facebook, or if you're talking about the evolution of Facebook groups and how they're trying to kind of like create a system that allows people to sell memberships on Facebook. Um, I don't like going all in on Facebook. I like owning the race course. So if I'm ever building a membership, I'm trying to get that off of Facebook and on my own platform, probably a Zen Foro forum. I did a video uh, today and yesterday with a guy, uh, my integration specialist, those videos will be live next week. And he talks a lot about this. And it's like, if you put all your eggs in that Facebook basket and Facebook decides to ban your group, it's done, game over, right? So building it on your own site, you have control over it. Um, John Doe, most bots are approved with Facebook. As far as you know, that's great. Um, I think that's cool. I do think bots are, are pretty stupid, but they will continue to get better. Um, and sometimes a bot does the first two interactions and then it goes to a human from there. Like, I don't know, bots are, bots are the way things are going, right? I think it's kind of nifty. So Ryan, is it necessary to do content marketing and get organic traffic if you're doing paid advertising? Absolutely not right? Like that's a, that's a very personal choice. Uh, the fastest scaling businesses I've ever seen use all paid traffic. If you go into a, a big time internet marketing conference and you survey the crowd, some will say only do paid stuff. Some will say only do organic stuff. There's going to be a, a mix of both camps. My wife and I do both because I want the rewards from both. So we do both and it takes a lot more effort. Um, you got to be willing to delay gratification to get content marketing to work for you. The really cool thing about running, um, paid traffic is you get that data so you can run split tests. You can really refine your funnel so much more quickly with paid traffic. And that can be really, really powerful. So Gino Gates, what's up, man? Uh, learn more from me than anyone else. Awesome on YouTube. That's fantastic. So be besides Facebook, what do I recommend? Like for pay-per-click? So my philosophy is it's more about like, where is your audience, right? Like if you have women who are in their forties and that's your audience, Pinterest, right? Because they're on Pinterest. It's a growing demographic. It's a great platform. Um, if you've got like teenagers who are 18 to 25, Snapchat, because that's where they're at, right? Like get it over there. So it's it's more of like identifying where your perfect customer is, right? So like you don't get traffic. Traffic is always there. Traffic is always flowing. You want to just go get in front of traffic. So figure out where your perfect traffic source is based on your demographics and the demographics of these different platforms, and then go get your ads there. Is your perfect person searching Google for a specific thing? Show up on Google ads, right? That's, that's the trick there. Um, Cool. Like, uh, damn, anybody know what time we started this chat? That's awesome. I have no clue what time we started. So if I go over two hours, it won't record the whole thing, which is goofy, but, um, probably gonna wrap it up here relatively soon. It's seven. I haven't done dinner yet. So that needs to happen. Um, perfect. I got another one from Logan here. Let's take a look at what Logan's got here. And real quick, I see another question from Ryan. Can you get results quicker than one year if you use paid advertising? Maybe, but like, it's just not guaranteed, right? Like, it just, it's a process. Like some people, like their brains work in the way that paid advertising work and they get it within a couple of months and it works. Most people try it and never get it, say this stuff doesn't work. And they, they go back to like happy hour drinks on Friday nights. Right. So like it's, it, you just, you got to test a lot of things to find out what actually works. And I think, so can you get results? Like how can you more quickly give value to the lives of others? If you can reframe your mind from how can I get to how can I give more effectively? How can I be most efficient in me giving what is inside of me that needs to get out to the world? That's really where the money shows up. When the money's a byproduct of your action of giving, that's when it actually works long-term. So I have got a URL here saved. Let's go in and do, 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 do. Take a quick look, screen share, share entire screen. Cool, one second here. Oh, I didn't change the dot. 
Dude, I like the online snowboard coach. I own snowboardbums.com, uh, an old idea that I had back in the day that I never really ran with. Um, love snowboarding. Lived on the North Shore of Lake Tahoe for about four years. Um, so, oh, so that didn't work. So let's see here. Is this I am? Okay, so I got an error 404 page. Um, I'm going to try like a lowercase I. That didn't work. So is it just, yeah, let me try one more time. So, okay, and do, 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 do. Solid maybe. Solid maybe. We're loading. Yeah, love snowboarding. I think snowboarding is a great niche. Um, you know, like people definitely spend money on gear. If you can brand yourself, like information's way better margins, but um, like build a list, people trust you. You can recommend gear. There's a lot of ways it can go. Avant Link is a great affiliate network for snowboard gear. Sorry, mate, didn't didn't come up. I tried twice. Um, cool, Jesus is already making changes. I like that, I like that. Anthony, what's up, man? I'm happy to, happy to bump into you here. That's awesome. John Doe, good to see you. Are you really a John Doe or are you just John Doe? Yeah, Facebook being at 2 billion monthly users, that's a, it's a crazy number. Um, so, I mean, that's bigger than like China, bigger than India. Like if Facebook was a country, it'd be the monthly active. If you go off their daily active users, I think it would be like number three. I think it would be like China, India, Facebook, USA, Indonesia or something crazy. Keep it simple. What's up? Welcome to the party. Thanks for coming in here. Um, Cool. Like, let's take a look here. The grabber.com, the bed grabber.com. Awesome. Let's take a quick look. I'm pretty sure we're still sharing the screen. Thanks for all capsing that dot. That makes it a little easier to see. Um, let me just double check that I am screen sharing. I am super cool. The bed grabber. Do your sheets come with the bed grabber? No, that's just not fair. Those bedding companies are just plain selfish. So, so cool. Like you're, you're taking a step towards engaging hook. Now this is a home page, right? Is this a squeeze page? Okay. So you've got a squeeze page here. <clears throat> Great to have a video videos like this. This shows so much so quickly, but like, so you've got your brand up first and we were just talking about this a minute ago, right? So bed grabber, bed grabber, you got it twice. No need for this. This is just wasted space. So now you're saying, do your sheets come with the bed grabber? No, I'm gonna go out on a limb. 99.99999% of human beings' sheets do not come with a bed grabber. And the reason is we don't know what this is. We don't care, most importantly. Now, I'm not saying I don't care. I care about you, right? But I'm, I'm trying to help un you understand that like we care more about a result than we do about this thing that you're proud of. And it's great that you're proud of it, but you need to re-angle this in like, are you tired of always fighting your sheets to put them on, right? Like this is... Like this is all kind of like marketing PR stuff and you need to look into direct response marketing. Are you sick and tired of blank? Well, this new blank will solve the biggest problem in two easy steps, right? So you can just kind of, you want to start with a question. I think it's great, but not such a rhetorical question that leads to a no, because it's like, well, of course not. I don't even know what it is. I'm out of here, right? So it's like, how do you ask the question that makes this make sense? Now, having a YouTube video here is potentially dangerous. This is an exit point for me, right? Having this up here is potentially an exit point for me. So if you really want me to go here and enter your information like why what what are we what am i entering my information for right you got that here so like that's just not fair da, 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 sheets with a bigger i would get a luxurious that include so are you selling sheets are you selling a sheet so i'm just a little confused here um and like we need a specific call to action so how i would rephrase this but i like the look right this this style of just text up top this makes it super easy and i like how easy this is because this is what a squeeze phase in a landing page should be it's like big question have you know do you have this really really big problem do you want to know the one solution that's easy fast and cheap blah 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 enter your information below to get a quick video that'll show you blah 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 or click here for a free video and then they click for a free video and it asks them to opt in they opt in and then you show them the video of how it works right so it looks like this enter your email is actually talking about this it looks like you're trying to build a list for a kickstarter now if you look at what's worked for a lot of kickstarters is viral videos and viral marketing showing problems and solutions right so 
like I good on you for taking effort. Get really clear on what your goal is, right? It seems like you're trying to build a list. So when you are running your uh, Kickstarter, you can email a list and get a big boost. So what do you need? You need a list of people who are fed up and tired, sick and tired of fidgeting with the bed right? Fidgeting with these bed sheets. You've created a better mousetrap in this situation. So you need to help them realize that they want access to your better mousetrap. And then you want them to get to line up. And like, this is needs to be up above here. And really, I think I would just try to limit the amount of content that's on this page. You kind of are blending the idea of a squeeze page and a sales page, right? So you're, you're kind of going into the sales pitch. You're kind of going back to, well, let me just get your info so I can get you on that. And like, it's, it's good to take start to get started, but really I think getting super clear in like, we've come up with a revolution in bed sheets. If you're interested, I can get you a special deal when we launch the Kickstarter. It's gonna solve your biggest problem. Enter your information below. I'm curious if you're gonna be running Facebook ads on this. Um, I, I think that, that like, is this a compelling enough product for me? Uh, I'm a guy, I don't like doing sheets or anything. I don't know if anybody in the world likes doing sheets out of curiosity, but like, is this compelling enough as is right here for me to want to go like I'm signing up. I have to have this, right? Like I just kind of keep tucking it. Like I do have to actually go back and deal with sheets again from time to time. Uh, I live in Airbnb. So I've experienced a lot of different sheets and a lot of different beds. So I, I get the problem that you're solving, but it's like, how do you hook this and create this in a way? And who's the one going to be buying this? I'm guessing it's going to be mom. I'm guessing she's going to be in her, you know, like, like what are her problems with it? And like, are she, is she always having to keep fixing the kid's bed? Like what is, what is that angle that can get you in to get you into her story, into that conversation she's having in her head and and then how do you leverage it from there? Um, I think it's worth a shot. Like it sounds like you, you created an invention and like that's that's one challenge, right? Like you've already got over one hurdle, but the big challenge is how do you market it? How do you get people interested in it? Um, watching the Shark Tank, I think watching The Profit, two great TV shows for you to kind of synthesize ideas. And if you notice people who actually drive sales and find ways to drive sales, those are the ones that get picked up by investors that could sell, get distribution rights. So it's a worthy challenge. Um, this is something that obviously could be in Bed Bath and Beyond and other big stores, but you got to prove the model and you got to figure out what that psychological trigger is for the individual who's going to buy. And you, you, you've gotten started. So good on you for getting started and kind of running with it here. Let's keep going here. Um, Started about 8.30, John Doe. Well, what time zone are you in? So I'm going to go, I, I think I got maybe up until about 7.20. I got about 10 minutes left. Um, political fan page, right? Talk crap about people. Yep, that's how politics works. Um, what do I sell and market? So my wife and I create and sell meditations and spiritual development courses. And we sell it through a website. We also have affiliate relationships where we recommend separate products. Uh, that people can buy, um, recommend readings. And I do have a few affiliate par products I recommend through this channel, um, but that's it. Um, so meditations and spiritual development courses is the core of our business. So Kenzel, using Insight Tool doesn't show you anything cool, but in the suggestions, there's a lot. Would that still help? Absolutely, that is the way to go. Made a video on that. Miles, do I recommend college marketing courses? No, I don't. Um, Family friend was going through uh, UCLA's uh, digital advertising um, marketing course, and like this dude, I was like, "Cool, we we're we we're together at Christmas or something." And uh, I was like, "Cool, like let me see your textbook." He's like, "Oh, I'm in an analytics class. I'm learning about Google Analytics." I'm like, "Cool, let's take a look at it, right?" I'm I'm in analytics all day every day. It was. Man, it was like a four-year-old book. Didn't even have the newest version of analytics. The collegiate system moves slow. The internet marketing world moves fast, right? People who are actually active doing things like myself, like there's no way I'm going to go plug into a collegiate system and teach at a collegiate level because I'm 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 just not, I'm not going to be able to really maximize my help and things move way too quick. They want they want structured syllabuses and blah blah blah. Like no nah, everything like things change so fast. Facebook's changing things every week, right? I'm adapting my game every single week to what's going on. It would be a perpetual state of catch up. So how do you learn? Do it. Jump in. Find a nick. Pitch it. Find a niche, pick a niche, start building stuff. Don't know what to build it on? Build a website. Like, do you know anybody who owns a business near you? Right? Do you know a chiropractor? Build a chiropractor website without even asking them. Get it to rank, get it on the top of Google and give it to them, right? Just get start. find a way to get started. Do you love something, want to share? Start making videos, start a vlog, start publishing, figure a way to just start putting content out on the web, whether it's YouTube videos, a podcast, blog posts, whatever it is, 
get to where you can start publishing things, then start to learn how to build an email list, right? My videos, like you want a, a crash course, a master's course on it all right here. It's all here for you. Uh, you just got to dig in and put the time and more than learning, you got to get that, that actual physical like work product practice where you're actually creating stuff. That's the most important part. Um, glad you guys are liking the info. Um, Awesome. Just all sorts of thank yous. Thank yous. Uh, I'm happy to it. Uh, people are logging off to go back to work. I love it. Um, cool. So we have uh, Jesus Castillo, um, 3,000 subscribers. Should you launch a membership site or something like that at this point? Try to figure out what your long-term strategy is besides giving a lot of free value. Yeah. I mean, like survey them. If you got 3,000 subscribers, ask them what they want help with. Literally, send them, send them a survey. If you got WordPress, you can do it with for, formidable forums. You can do it with Contact Form 7. If you don't, you can go over to something like um, SurveyMonkey. I don't love SurveyMonkey, but it's just so easy to use. It works. Ask them. What's your biggest problem with blank, right? Theoretically, those subscribers are specifically targeted to some sort of a niche. So you you know about the area that they're interested in, ask them. Let them tell you what they want more of and go create it. Eventually, I think making a membership program is brilliant because it gives you long-term revenue and recurring revenue, which helps you kind of build a life, right? Like if you're doing launch, launch, and your income has this like launch, launch kind of like trend to it it's really tough to like get a mortgage raise kids count on the uh count on it but if you have a membership program that like people stay on monthly your income does more of this it's way more stable you might see a 10 20 percent churn rate with enough advertising you can bring in 30 percent new people a, a month you can get like a net gain of 10 percent per month and like that that's really powerful but like you don't have to start it right away we had we didn't have anything when we started ours. We just wrote a sales letter for it, sent it out. People bought it and we were like, okay, they want this. Cool. Um, and for ours, it's ongoing meditations, essentially, like as, as things change, like just, just new meditations and people love it. Um, so I, I would really ask them and, and test some things. And it's what's cool is you could create course A, course B, course C over the course of the next year, sell them each individually. And then after next year, you can put them all into a membership program that's got like a community and a forum. So like the things you're doing now could build up to a membership in the future, right? So, so you don't have to jump in, but you could um, ask them what they're interested in. So Gonti Murti, under one campaign, we have two ad sets and both ad sets are performing well, but only a small part of the audience is in each of the ad sets. Is it possible to combine them to then promote that combine so the scaling will be easy? Nope, nope. Once you change anything on the ad set, it starts everything over. You re-enter the auction. So if you've got two ad sets going well, let them be, let them run. It's okay to have two set of buttons running well. I often have several ad sets running at the same time. They're a little different audiences and there's some overlap in there, but it's, it's never caused a problem. And I let them run until my KPIs are off and then that's it. Um, monkey visuals. What's up in Vietnam. That's awesome. I'm hoping to, to make it to Vietnam this, um, I don't know, maybe December or something. There's some areas I want to see. Um, so been following my videos, took advice in choosing Thrive Themes, an active campaign, cool, confused, tracking someone start to finish, including buying an affiliate product. Yeah, so when they leave your site, you lose the tracking, right? Like that's just what is. Um, one way people go about this is if you create a bonus and like, hey, if you buy this product, I'll also give you this really cool bonus that enhances the product, right? And then they have to buy the thing, email you their receipt, and then you mail them the bonus. And at that point, you can go back into active campaign and add a tag as someone who purchased. Um, you could add them to a private Facebook group, you can add them to a forum that you have, but like giving some sort of piece of value that requires them to forward their email receipt to you. And then you go look, but then the funny thing is they might buy it under a different email address. And you're like, oh, I don't see you as this email address, but you can just plug them in manually. Um, but yeah, when you're doing affiliate, you do lose that tracking to that level. That's normal. That's okay. Um, some affiliate systems let you log in and see the email address of the individuals who purchased from your link and you can just go pull the data that way. But oftentimes giving them some sort of a bonus will not only increase their willingness to buy through your link specifically, um, but it can, it can be a great way for you to, to make sure people, um, you know, get back in, in front. And that's how you can kind of close that loop outside of automation, take hands on stuff. So Oceana Shearer, we have Archimor.club taking a look at your funnel. So let me switch this over here and go back to the screen share and we'll share the screen. Now let's go in and take a quick look. Okay, cool. Super simple. I get visually explore art like a kid, learn more, not very compelling, right? There's not really a hook. We're not solving a problem. 
like art can be used in so many different formats to solve so many specific problems from anxiety to depression to creativity, all sorts of things. So I'm gonna click learn more and see what happens. Um, so now you've got me on it. So, so like this, I shouldn't have had to take that action to get to this. And this has way too many colors going on already. Like white background, super simple. Um, I think if we look at just the, the basic layout of bed grabber, like, I wouldn't necessarily have this up top, but this is ultimately, and I know as an artist, you're probably like, but Miles, that's the ugliest site in the world. It is like, and I don't mean that if you're still watching, it's it's not colorful. It doesn't have like all kinds of art to it, but these kinds of things work. And why do they work is because they're speaking to specific needs, right? It's when we try to get things kind of like too colorful that it messes with my eye. I'm actually having a difficult time like reading and then to transition down here. Um, it, it doesn't make much sense. At this point, I get what you do, right? Like you do a uniquely monthly box subscription and it contains art supplies. This is awesome. So, so I like what you're doing, right? So enough supplies to try each of the guy to price twice. Cool. So what do you, what do I get? Right? Like sign up to learn more. So like, I just learned more. I just read more, right? Like what, what do you get? Like, are you going to send me the first box free? Now you're talking compelling, right? And I probably just freaked you out when I said that. Cause you're like, but dude, I have fixed costs. I know you do. And your boxes have to be awesome. How can you get like a sample box free, right? Free plus shipping is so powerful right now. If you run ads to mothers of children between the ages of, I don't know, how old is this girl right here? Like seven and 12. And you're like, get a free art supply box, click here. They click and it's like, get a free art supply box, just pay shipping and handling, which is $9.95. And hopefully you can get the whole cost of the box, the shipping, the handling, everything down to $9.95, right? Or $9.80 or $9.70 so you can cover your click spend. Are you going to potentially be operating at a loss at that point in your funnel? Yes, but you'd probably get a really high conversion rate because you're giving something really cool away for free. Then what happens on the page after they buy that is they actually go into your funnel and you're like, cool, get a one-year supply or upgrade, get get two times the boxes, get an extra box, get a this, get a that, just add it on for $37 and that's where you make your money and you, you become break even. You want to be break even on the ads on that front end of your funnel because what happens is you're getting new people to test your thing. You're not losing money. You're not making money, but you're bringing in potentially hundreds of new people to check out your stuff. That's how you can scale a business like this massively. Um, so like what I would try to do is like get this page to clearly without distractions. I'm just, I'm a little distracted by this gets even potentially more distracting down here. If you know what I'm saying? Like, like let's really simplify this of uh, the art, a more box. You can literally go straight for the sale if you want, but like, what can you give for free? That's going to give them an experience that will help them understand the value that you can deliver to them. Right. Is there some sort of a print outable thing? But then if you do a printout thing, right? Like, like click here for a free PDF that'll help you design three art projects for your kids. Right. And then they go and they print it out. They get the, the three art projects with their kids and they do it. All the kids are happy. They love it. Great. They know, like, and trust you at this point. Then you can offer your box. If you don't want to do a free plus shipping, but man, I would really, I would try to figure out how to do free plus shipping. Another thing I would do if I was you is you probably heard of Birchbox. Go to Birchbox, go on your phone, go on your laptop, then go back to Facebook. See how they're retargeting you. What does Birchbox offer you as a first offer? Go to the men's trunk club, go to the dollar shave club, go to HelloFresh. What other box solutions are out there that aren't overlapping with your niche. How do they build their business? Go model, go find the biggest damn ones you can. Like these the ones that have gotten massive amounts of vulture venture capital money. Um, go model what they're doing and try to structure your funnel in a way that theirs is. And, and like, if I'm assuming you're, you're a lady for some reason, I don't really know why that might be, uh, who knows anyways, but like go buy the birch box. Do they offer you an upsell afterwards? Be like, hubby, I got to do it. It's for the business, right? Write it off obviously. And like, get it in your hand. How do they deliver it? Like really analyze what the leaders in this space are doing and figure out how you can mimic that with your stuff. Um, so I would say either offer a free thing for me to print out to do with the kids so I can show, so you can prove to me that you can help me entertain my kids and help my kids become artistic, right? And if you need it to be a downloadable printable thing, but you might train people to only want something free that's downloadable if you go that direction. You might not, it could work in the future. Then the other option is a free plus shipping funnel um, where they just pay shipping, right? Get free art supplies, blah, 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 just pay shipping. They click, the shipping's $9.99. There's one 
them like free yoga pants. I think that was like paid nineteen ninety nine shipping for free yoga pants. And I was like, really? Like I'm obviously paying for the yoga pants and the shipping, but they were running that on Facebook successfully, theoretically. So like play with that. Those are the two best ideas I have for you. Simple page picture of the box, right? If that's an art supply box, like white paint, make that box, the thing stand out and make sure your hook is about solving that mother's problem because it's probably gonna be a mom who buys solving her problem when her problem is those kids it's summertime right kids are like mom 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 look mom look and she's like oh my god like sit down with the bot play with your art box right like play with the art box like if you can help her realize that your box is going to solve the mom 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 problem you've won right but how do you communicate that in two sentences in a headline and right it's it's that's it's very challenging and that's what great copywriting does and i think it just takes some some introspection but but that's what i would want to see out of your um opt-in page uh you know at this point i'm, I'm pretty sure like man my voice is dead uh i'm pretty tired i haven't had dinner yet it's like 7 30 over here so i'm gonna do a quick look through like i really appreciate everybody here uh man there's so many comments i didn't get to i really appreciate um I really do appreciate everything. And um, man, so let's see here. Zippy Startup, you got one here. All right, I'm catching one more here because you. We, I think we tried yours and it didn't work in the beginning. Am I sharing my screen right now? I'm not. So give me one quick second. We're going to do one more. And I got like two minutes before my video won't go. They only let me do a two-hour replay. So zippystartup.com slash as, uh, let's see if this works. Cool. Perfect. Free video reveals. I love it. You, you literally took perfectly. The 2017 accelerated method for growth hacking a large tribe of subscribers, customers, and fans without paying for it. Okay, cool. So like you've used a very, very um, tried and true methodology here, right? I don't know if it's compelling enough and I'm being nitpicky. What you've done is awesome, right? You've taken action. Good on you, mate. But like free video reveals the accelerated method for like, this is kind of weak, right? For growth, like growth hacking, isn't growth hacking an accelerated method, right? Like, so growth, hack, like I think you're double stating here, a large tribe of subscribers, customers, and fans. I don't necessarily like the the light blue. I feel like it's a softer color and I don't feel like it has the impact as like maybe just all black. So let me, give me one quick second here. So get the 2017 Growth Hacking Guide to explode your tribe of subscribers, customers, and fans without paying for traffic or owning a website, right? Some, like, like just that, like explode, like these little tiny bits and like in and out as fast as you possibly can. Um, I don't really like the highlighting on this. I don't think you need this highlighted. It actually makes it more difficult to read. And this background has a little bit of clutter going on. It's got a little bit like there's noise. It's kind of a little distracting. Um, after this, I would not have the video. Oh, is that a click pop? Okay. Okay, cool. You got me on that. I would have the button first personally, right? I would, I would put click here to watch the video because ultimately that's what I'm expecting to happen. And then below that, you'll see just the top of the free video. And I might be like, okay, yeah, button. Okay. I see it. Let me just check the video. And it's the same result, right? For everybody watching at home. I love this method. This is like old school stuff. You click, you get the click pop. This is what I've explained as a click pop. You click here. It's the exact same click pop. And that's perfect. I would just put the click here to get the free video. Now I would put that here. And, um, maybe like click here so I can send you the free video or click here to watch the free video. Um, run traffic, mate. I'm guessing out of the box, something like this, maybe a tweak to the headline, 25 to 30% conversion rate if you get your targeting dialed. And with that, I don't know what you got on the back end, but there's a really good chance you could make that uh, cash flow positive quick. I think that's going to grow a list for you. So um, perfect. All right. I'm, that's it, y'all. I'm going to I'm gonna call it at this point. Let me switch back to the face so I can give you a, a smile, a cheese, and a wave goodbye. So Thank you for joining me. This has been a lot of fun. Um, I really appreciate getting to spend time with you. I really honor this, the ability to, to give of what I've learned that's helped me so much throughout the years. I really hope you take action on what you've learned. I hope I wasn't offensive in my direct approach here. I really, I just want to offer as much kind of quick information to try to help you get that next little step because it's it's all these little iterations that make things work. It's tweak, 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 tweak that makes things work. So thank you for spending time with me on this Friday evening or Saturday if you're in Oz, New Zealand, Singapore, Asia, uh, just Oceana. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to connecting with you on the next video. I'm gonna go have some dinner and relax and let my, my voice take a, a little break here. So thank you again for your time. See you on the next video. Be well.